It's my pleasure to officially welcome you to Pokemon Go Fest 2020. And for those of you joining us again, welcome back. I stand here at the gardens at Lake Merritt in Oakland, where many of you in the trainer community have gathered in the past to play and connect with one another. This site is actually where we hosted some of our very first events in the early days of Niantic. And so it's fitting that we kick off here. It holds a special place in our history of serving the local communities where we live and play. I also want to take a moment to say how much it means to us that you've embarked on this journey with us and shared in the adventure with Pokemon Go. Thank you, trainers, both new and veteran. We know that many of you look forward to this moment year after year, and we look forward to bringing you another amazing Pokemon Go Fest experience. You will notice that Go Fest looks a little different this year. We've created a completely reimagined global event that's fully virtual while preserving the real feeling of community you've come to enjoy and expect out of our live events. We're bringing more people together than ever before at GoFest this year. Trainers are joining from 110 countries and regions around the world. It's truly phenomenal to see the shared passion for Pokemon Go connect so many people across geographical distances, different languages, and cultures. Like many of the features we've enabled in the core game over the past months, GoFest is designed with many more ways to maximize the overall experience through unique gameplay. I'm particularly excited about the rotating virtual habitats that we're introducing for the first time this year. At Niantic, we believe that local communities can be a massive force for positive change. We're excited to be working with Pokemon Go trainers to identify your favorite small and local businesses so they can be featured in Pokemon Go. Through your support, we've received over 15,000 nominations of local businesses, and that number continues to grow. We're gonna spend the next couple of weeks looking through those nominations to narrow down to the final 1,000 small businesses to be featured. These are important first steps in a long road of recovery ahead and we thank you for all of your efforts so far. We also look forward to donating more than $5 million in support of black creators and nonprofit organizations in the US. We remain committed to making a positive impact in our communities. I'm currently playtesting GoFest and I'm excited about what's in store for trainers. Here's a sneak peek of the Pokemon you'll be able to encounter at GoFest. And lastly, I'm excited about the brand new Niantic Merchandise Store we recently launched. I encourage you to check it out if you haven't already. It's another way to showcase your Niantic spirit anytime. We encourage you to get out, enjoy the summer, and explore safely outdoors. There are hidden stories in our neighborhoods just waiting to be discovered. Create memorable adventures out in the real world and stay connected with friends and fellow trainers by sharing your Pokemon Go experiences virtually. There's never been a more important time for it. We hope that you enjoy Pokemon Go Fest as much as we enjoyed creating it. Let's play. Welcome trainers to Pokemon Go Fest 2020. We're so excited to kick things off here in the Americas. I'm Michael, Director of Marketing and Global Live Events at Niantic. Hey everybody, I'm Veronica. I'm Product Marketing Manager for Pokemon Go. Hola a todos, I'm Alan Mandujano. I'm Growth Scout and the Business Developer for Niantic in Latin America. We thought it'd be fun this year to kick things off by talking to three different people who worked on three different parts of Pokemon Go Fest. Although we work very closely together, we actually don't know a whole lot about each other and what goes on behind the scenes. So with that, let's put Mike on the hot seat first and ask him a bit about how he designed Pokemon Go Fest. As somebody who has been overseeing Go Fest design, not only this year, but since the very beginning, what would you recommend folks to do to make the most of their day? There's so much to do at Pokemon Go Fest this year, but the first tip I would give is to make sure you're exploring all five different habitats. Each habitat features a unique set of Pokemon, and you may also want to remember to use incense while you're exploring, because some Pokemon may only be discoverable through incense. The second tip is to go and check out the virtual team lounge. 
There are tons of awesome ways to connect with trainers all around the world through the Virtual Team Lounge. And you can also find our print at home kit there where you can print fun Pokemon Go Fest decorations and paper craft to enhance your experience. And the third and final tip I would give is to not forget about day two. We've actually built a completely different experience for day two with fun surprises that I can't wait to see people discover. When designing Global Go Fest this year, what were the most challenging pieces? It's recreating that sense of community that you get at our in-person live events. As anyone who's been to a Pokemon Go Fest in the past can attest to, there's something truly magical about bringing thousands of players together to explore a beautiful park. We'll be featuring a select number of photos of Pokemon Go trainers all over the world enjoying the event to help create that sense of community and togetherness throughout the weekend. That's great. Hey, and what would you say is your favorite part about working in live events? I'm going to cheat on this question and give two answers. My first favorite thing about live events is that at Niantic, we treat them as an extension of our games themselves. When you go to Pokemon Go Fest or a Safari Zone, you're playing on your personal account, and that enables you to be fully immersed in the experience. The Pokemon that you catch at these events, you get to keep for the rest of your life, and they can serve as memories of this awesome experience. My second favorite thing, when you go to these events, you truly feel that sense of community when you see thousands of other players smiling and enjoying you know, the, the same experience that, that you're having. Live events are actually how the three of us met for the first time. Uh, when we put together the Safari Zone in Porto Alegre, uh, that's where Veronica and I met Alan, uh, which sounds like the perfect opportunity to get myself out of the hot seat and put Alan there instead. So Alan, you've been at Niantic for a little over a year now. What would you say is the thing that you're most proud of in that time? The work that we did last year with, uh, with our communities in Latin America regarding uh, social impact was something that really made a, a strong impression with me, something I'm, I'm really proud. It really showed the power of this game to change the world, not just as a, as a tool to have fun and to make friends, but also as a positive way of, of making an, an impact and, and improving the community and the places you play. I would say that's what I'm, I'm most proud of. Alan, what are you most excited about for Latin America? We have some of the most passionate fan, fans in the world uh, of Pokemon Go. And if I were to pick three things, I would say number one, the amazing, amazing support uh, we received during these social events and, and really any other event during the, the past year. Also, the amazing partnerships we were able to, to secure with 7-Eleven and McDonald's in Latin America that have brought over 4,000 uh, POIs and, and coffee shops and, and gyms to the 23 countries. And third, I, I would say I'm, I'm very excited about the events and experiences we have been able to execute with these partners. What are you most looking forward to over the course of this weekend? Last year, trading was a huge part of, of experience for me. I, I would like to enjoy that again. So I, I'm planning to catch a lot of Pokemon, some of them to trade to to friends of mine that might not be able to play this event, but that I can uh, keep for trades in the future. I'm also looking forward to catching some really, really good four star and, and strong Pokemon for PvP so I can uh, battle you and, and maybe win one of these days. <laughs> Let's talk about you, Veronica. I mean, I, I read on your LinkedIn page that you will beat the Elite Four at age seven, which I think is, is a great thing. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, I, I guess I thought that was an accomplishment at the time, and it's actually quite relevant for my professional experience now. Um, I played Blue Version when I was seven, and I was immediately hooked on the world of Pokemon. I was really into the trading cards. I was into collecting figures. I was never a big battler, even back in the day when I was playing um, as a kid, but I always loved the stories, the lore, the characters, the spirit of the Pokemon games that basically everybody can be a hero, which I think is mirrored in Pokemon Go as well. One of the most impressive things I've seen this year, actually, um, is how you put this awesome Pokemon Go Fest TV campaign together amidst all the current filming restrictions in place. Can you tell us a little bit about what that experience was like? 
Yes, it was crazy, probably to put it in one word. I do have to plug that in the virtual team lounge, we have some other videos that talk about what this process was like. But bottom line is, as we were coming into 2020, we knew we wanted to do a big TV campaign. And when COVID hit, that changed a lot of our plans, not just for the product itself and the features that were coming out, but the marketing plans that we had. We looked at our plans and we thought to ourselves, could we still make a TV campaign? And could we still make this TV campaign meaningful with the shortened time frame, the restrictions on mobility, the restrictions on the world right now? And ultimately, we said yes. And our, our partners, our agency, our extended team really mobilized to get this together. Yeah, I think that TV campaign is really great. The commercial is really, really good. Uh, I, I would like to ask you, you know, uh, one of my favorite campaigns of all time uh, is, uh, well, last year and this year's Team Rockets campaign. I think there's a lot of creativity there. Cool. Uh, I would really like to know how did that happen? How, how did that come to life? I have to say it was really exciting for us as a marketing team to get to welcome Team Go Rocket to the game for the first time last year. And then over time, we got to know the leaders. Seeing their backstory has been fascinating. Getting to know them as characters has been very, very interesting, not only from a creative perspective, but from a narrative one as well. I personally relate a lot to Sierra's no-nonsense personality. It's fun <laughs> running into her when she is out wrecking havoc and I've got my rocket radar equipped. And um, Team Go Rocket, I'll just say that they're a very tricky group. They've run some pretty great marketing campaigns of their own and I have learned a lot from their unique approach to marketing. So should we be concerned about Team Go Rocket this weekend? I mean, they, they have their new balloon technology they like showing up at Pokestops, but I could also see them enjoying showing up at parties like Pokemon Go Fest too. Like I said, they're, they're very tricky. Well, trainers, that about wraps it up for us over here. So many people across so many teams worked tirelessly to put together Pokemon Go Fest this year. And I can't wait to see you experience it. Global Go Fest is very special and it's very different for so many reasons. So with that, I'm sure folks are itching to head out for Pokemon Go Fest. I hope everyone has fun out there. Thanks from all of us at Niantic and have an amazing Pokemon Go Fest. Bye everyone. Adios, gracias. Hey everybody, my name is Matt Salmon. I'm on Team Mystic. My favorite Pokemon is Lotad. My favorite Pokemon type is Grass. There's a ton of stuff I could probably add about my Pokemon fandoms, but I'm the lead product manager of Pokemon Go. A little bit about my role. I work with the game designers and the other product managers to figure out what features we want to build and when we want to build them. So our team is in charge of the roadmap and all the features that eventually end up getting out to you guys. The whole premise of Pokemon Go from the very first trailer that we, we announced the game with was what if in this world of ours, we were constantly surrounded by Pokemon, what would that world look like and how would it feel? And fundamentally, we think it's exciting and fun. And so that's what Pokemon Go is really built on is the idea that we are in this world with Pokemon. Our world is that world. And because of that, our world is cooler and more, more exciting for it. We always try to preserve that bit of reality when we're trying to build our features. It's why we have AR features. It's why we use points of interest in the real world. It's really to make sure that Pokemon Go has that feeling of when you're exploring the real world, you feel like that is the world of Pokemon. You feel like that, that is connected. And so it's really important to us that we preserve that fantasy, which is fundamentally the, the heart of Pokemon Go, that as you go into the real world, as you explore, you can go ahead and have a Pokemon adventure of your own. Yeah, we're really excited for Mega Evolution. It's been really important to us as developers and fans of the franchise to get this one right. So it's something that we're spending some time on. But one thing I can confirm is that your existing Pokemon today will be the ones that will be Mega Evolved. So the Charizard you got at the very beginning of the game, your first Charmander, or the one that you evolved your community today, those are all viable candidates. They can all be Mega Evolved. We're, we're excited to get that feature out to you in more detail soon. Level cap. Yeah, and this has been something that's been in discussion for a very long time. The right way to do a level cap increase has been the topic of much, much debate internally. For us, the most important piece that we wanted to land was 
we don't want the level cap to increase and then all of a sudden people just sort of get set to their new level and that's sort of the end of it. We do want the experience to feel a little bit different past level 40 than it has felt up to level 40. So fundamentally, getting level 41 and beyond is still going to require effort. That's really what levels are intended to to display is how much effort you put into the game. And so that effort economy is still very important for us, but it's not gonna be as simple as just grinding XP through the ways that you might be used to. So the experience should be a little bit different and we're excited to announce more of that later this year. There's a lot of cool stuff that we're planning to do later this year. There's gonna be more features, there'll be more Pokemon, there'll be more events. We're really excited to, to bring a lot of these new things out to players and we hope you'll enjoy the experience. We do want Pokemon Go to be a game that lasts a really long time, and we think part of that real-world appeal is building a game that doesn't just sort of, you finish the game, you fizzle out, and you feel like the game's done. We really do want Pokemon Go to be a game that sort of feels like it's persistent, real, evolving, just like the real world is. So as we move past 2020, the team's going to be spending a little bit more time on some of the existing features we have today. We've been launching a ton of new features over the last several years, and we want to find that right balance of making sure the new stuff's coming out and the stuff that you already like is getting better. So as we move forward, there's still a lot to look forward to, and we hope you'll stick with us in this journey. We believe in the potential of every human being. Niantic's diversity and inclusion strategy creates opportunities for every employee to maximize their contributions and to enable a culture of innovation. Diverse teams are valuable, are more successful, are better serving our trainers. Therefore, diversity is imperative, not only from a cultural perspective, but also for a business strategy. It strengthens the communities in which we live, work, and play through our commitment to build communities and partnerships that recognize and value diverse cultures and perspectives. Our mission for Social Impact is to amplify the amazing things that our games already do. When you're playing games like Pokemon Go, you're getting outside, you're exercising, you're interacting with other people, and you're learning more about your communities. When we think about our community and the impact that we can have, what if we all picked up one piece of trash every time we went outside to play Pokemon Go? What if every time we did a raid with the people around us, we talked to one person or even just smiled at one person and made their day a little bit better? These small actions can have a huge impact. And as a collective community, we really have a lot of power to make the world a better place. A lot of the social impact work that Niantic does is inspired by the initiative that you all are taking every day to help your local communities. We've been so inspired by players who organize food drives for their communities, who go out and organize local park cleanups just to make these public spaces that they play in more beautiful and more accessible to everyone around them. When I think of our events here at Niantic, you immediately see the rich diversity of ages, abilities, personalities, origins, backgrounds. And we take pride in creating games that are universally loved by so many different people. We believe in creating games and experiences for our global player community that are a reflection of a diverse world that serves as our inspiration and source of strength. We partner with a variety of organizations to host events or even support major initiatives. These partnerships enable us to support and further initiatives started by brilliant people all over the world. These include educational programs through partnerships with Young Women Empowered and TechRow to global sustainability programs with Leave No Trace. One of my favorite events that we've ever supported was a request that came in from both a Pokemon Go trainer and a coordinator of the historic Oakland Foundation, which supports the oldest public park in Atlanta, Georgia. The park had been really open and welcoming to trainers throughout the years, and the players wanted to give back to that beautiful public space by hosting a fundraiser. They had a one-day event, and despite torrential downpours, over hundreds of players came and raised $5,000 for the restoration and preservation of this public space. We encourage mentorship, serving through food banks and local nonprofit organizations. We also understand that there is a systemic barrier to entry into the platform and game industry. And because of that, we have partnered with an organization to develop, train, and empower people with unconventional backgrounds to offer them an apprenticeship. The hope is that through this apprenticeship, we can then hire them on full time. 
Also, culture is huge. We value each other, we respect each other, and we want to lift each other up. So making sure that these things are innate within our core is imperative to empowering our employees and our players to impact the world that we live in. One of our favorite campaigns that we run is our Earth Month, where we ask players all over the world to participate in cleanups organized by nonprofits who are focused on sustainability in the local communities where they operate. In 2019, we saw over 17,000 players participate across 41 countries and six continents. And collectively, we were able to pick up and clean up and properly dispose of 145 tons of trash, which is heavier than 20 elephants. So just think about it. We have commitment from our leadership all the way down into the ethos, the core of who Niantic is. We build up our internal communities with employee resource groups or external communities with partnerships within our backyard to make sure that we're uplifting the community that we live and work in. We are millions of diverse trainers all around the world in our own local communities, but collectively, we have the ability to have a massive impact on the world around us and on the communities we live in. Guess what? By purchasing a ticket to Pokemon Go Fest, you've already helped support a number of communities as well as Black creators in the game industry. As a community leader, you can use your knowledge and social capital to educate and bring players together. So thank you so much for your participation. And if you want to learn more, go to our website, NianticLabs.com. Definitely when we got rained out at Chicago, and then we all kind of went into the city. It was raining, it was pouring, it was crazy, and everybody around us was still playing. We all just did raids, we hung out, we were all in coffee shops. It was something else, something that you can only really get in the Pokemon Go community. I was sitting on some beautiful hay bales in the trading post zone. I looked up at the Chicago skyline, saw all of the different team tents, and then all of the different trainers who were enjoying the moment, and it just was, Wonderful. Walking down the street and seeing this family by a gym that I would often frequent, and they were having trouble kind of understanding, you know, uh, what to do. They were brand new to the game, and I was able to meet them and say, hey, are you playing Pokemon Go? And they go, yes, and their eyes lit up. Probably the first time that had ever beaten and taken over a gym. The time that I hatched a shiny Shinx, and I traded it to my friend who was looking for one. The Farfetch day, when Farfetch was still a regional and I got my first Farfetched in San Francisco! My meilleur souvenir c'était de retrouver mes amis au Japon en 2017 et d'aller au Yokohama Pokemon Go Fest tous ensemble. One of my very favorite Pokemon Go memories is actually from Pokemon Go Fest in Yokohama. I raided with some co-workers at the Pokemon Center and my encounter was a shiny perfect Rayquaza. My favorite GoFest moment is from Yokohama last year. It was the first GoFest in Asia Pacific region. It was the first GoFest that I organized. It was a lot of work. It was really hot, but um, a lot of trainers loved it and I think it was fun. So my family and I went to London on the summer that raids came out in Pokemon Go and we did a big raid at the foot of London Bridge which was fun and so that was a wonderful experience for me doing raids in Pokemon Go. Mi mejor memoria de Pokemon Go fue uh, durante el raid hour de Mewtwo uh, corretear por el centro de la ciudad mientras llovía. It's the genuine excitement that everyone feels when they find their first shiny. It's like you can be in the middle of the mall and you'll see people milling around playing Pokemon Go and all of a sudden you'll hear shiny and it's just no matter no matter no matter how many shinies you have, no matter how much time you've been playing, it is just always exciting to hear and the excitement is infectious. My favorite GoFest memory was probably last year in Chicago. It was the first time I brought my family with me to GoFest and it was so much fun. Running around like fools in the park of Chicago with tens of thousands of other people, uh, just an incredible memory and I think just reinforced to me what's, uh, what's really fun about Niantic Games, that kind of sense of community and something that you can uh, you can do with your family. So great times, great memories.
Pokemon Go today. Join us for Pokemon Go Fest.